A car hack is silenced in the U.S., Windows Mount Manager has a vulnerability, it has been patched, and Square credit card readers are exploitable. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for August 12, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. I caught the DEF CON head cold, so I apologize for sounding a little stuffy. Huge thanks to everyone supporting the show and supporting us. There is plenty to talk about, so let's go ahead and start with story number one. Microsoft Patch Tuesday, which is going away soon, brings a security patch for USB. This is not for USB rubber ducky, nor is it for bad USB. It is for the Windows mount manager, which is used to give new USBs a drive letter when one is plugged in. The exploit would allow an attacker to use the Windows mount manager to get elevated privileges on operating systems all the way up to Windows 10. Since this attack requires physical access to a machine, it's labeled as important by Microsoft. An event log is also available to detect attacks on this vulnerability, which can be very useful for auditing of attempted exploits against a network. Square credit card readers are a very popular way for anyone to accept credit card transactions. Last week at the Black Hat conference, two researchers found a way to bypass encryption in those readers. They required a few components, wires, soldering iron, clips, and a screwdriver, plus the obvious Square reader. The hardware hack could bypass the crypto chip on the device, and the software hack creates an audio WAV file that can be decrypted and replayed over and over. This encrypted recording can be saved and be used to make a transaction later on. According to Square, quote, any card reader on the market can be deconstructed. The chip could be crushed and then reassembled by using the undamaged shell of the reader. At Square, we have processes in place to prevent malicious behavior on damaged readers. Our Square register software contains a number of security precautions that protect cards that are swiped on unencrypted readers. If our encrypted readers are damaged, they will not work with Square. Let's all hope that he is right. And lastly, it turns out that the car hacks just keep on coming. In many fancy cars, an immobilizer is in place to make sure that a key fob is near the ignition switch before it's allowed to turn on. This helps with problems like hot wiring, and it's found in a lot of cars with keyless ignition, such as Volkswagen, Audis, Fiat, Honda has cars like this, and Volvo. You can bypass this with a radio amplifier to fool the transponder, but in 2012, researchers at Radboud University actually broke into the crypto system used in the transponder. The Megamost transponder allows unlimited attempts to authenticate with the key fob. So after listening into the exchange a couple of times, the researchers could make a fake authentication and get this, less than 30 minutes. That's pretty fast, and a few were even faster than that. This flaw would require new keys as well as new transponders to be installed in all of the cars. Here's the kicker though. The researchers took this information to Volkswagen and other companies in 2012, and after months and months of discussion, Volkswagen filed a suit to silence them in the UK, withdrawing the paper so nobody got to see it for like over a year. The researchers were finally able to release the findings this year. I'm all for coordinated disclosure with the company involved, and I seriously hope that the automobile makers had plenty of time to fix the problem in their products since they went about this in such a harsh way. Now before I go, I want to remind everyone that we love reading your comments, so share your thoughts below on the YouTube page. I also want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far over on our Patreon. If you find value from this and you can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron. I love you guys. It was really fun to meet you over at DEF CON even. It's at Patreon dot com slash threat wire. We may even get to feature your adorable fur babies like these ones in the very next episode. And I gotta say, they're very adorable. So thank you for sending in your pictures. Our plan is to do the show three times a week as a milestone goal with a rotation of Patrick Norton, Darren Kitchen, and me. Now we're still working on funding up to our second episode per week goal. So if you haven't already, check out our Patreon page. And I hope you will continu continue to contribute and keep this completely independent, completely ad free. Of course, if you can't donate, like, share, subscribing, all that stuff goes a long way. So do me a favor this week. Just share the show with like two of your friends that haven't seen it yet. Go, do it. And you can find all the episodes and everything else about ThreatWire at ThreatWire.net. <laughs> and with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internets. All of them.